PLCs, relays, contactors, MCBs, terminal blocks, cam switches, status lights. In this video, I'm gonna explain all of those components in this industrial control panel. Let's dive in. Okay guys, on to fixing the components, my, or one of my favorite parts. So starting off with the MCBs, initially fixing the buzz bar to the bottom. Now I've had a lot of people tell me, oh, you shouldn't fix buzz bars to the bottom or you shouldn't fix buzz bars to the top. End of the day, it comes down to the MCB and the manufacturer. So check in the manual which way you should fix the buzz bar. A lot of them, it doesn't matter. And with these ABB MCBs, it doesn't matter. So I initially decided to do it at the bottom. Then I realized the path um, of the main feed. So I then switched it to the top. There we go, switching it to the top. Yeah them all torqued up and then getting those spare ways covered up. So next thing is filling that gap with the contactors and overloads and the transformer. So just marking that out, getting those holes marked and then drilling and fixing. And you can see this center line for the DIN rail is higher than this DIN rail because these contactors actually sit on the DIN rail over here. And to have the combined contactor and overload central we obviously need to move the din rail up so that's just something to be wary of and considerate of if you're fixing components that have like an add-on to make sure they then sit centrally within the trunking spaces so yeah center tapped drilled hoovered clean that up fix the din rail fix the transformer and then obviously fit the contactors and overloads and as you can see I've covered the holes, the, the holes that were there by mistake on this one. You can see it's just, just on show here, which is a bit annoying, but it is what it is. Next bit is similar thing with the laptop socket. So just getting that fixed. And then two things with that. Number one, make sure you use these rubber grommets. So something like that. And also when you're designing this, make sure that the laptop socket is as far up as possible because plugs, they usually have that sort of flexi protector that stops the cable bending too much, which is quite rigid. So if the socket's too low and close to the finger track, Trunking, it's very difficult to get that plug in so make sure you keep the socket as far up as you can okay then just adding the relays and then next thing is working out what type of terminal block goes where along the power side of the panel and then onto the BMS side of the panel so as you can see some are triple terminal blocks from Wago, so live, neutral, and protective earth. And then some of them are just standard single terminal blocks as well. So if you just saw then, um, I used a tape measure, so I was just getting a rough idea of where the main isolator needs to be mounted in relation to the door plates. And it's coming, and you can see the line there, it's very close to these terminal blocks here. So as you'll see, I need to rethink things. So as you'll see here, door isolator, the central bit here needs to align with this central bit here. And I want this bit here to align with that edge of the plates. So I'm working out the center now of the main isolator, which you can see here. Center of that should go here, but it's gonna be clashing with these terminal blocks. And I've moved them all the way up to this edge here, can't go anymore. And you, and you can see it's just off center. That central bit here needs to be in line here, but these are obviously in the way. But the beauty of Wago, Rather than using two single terminal blocks, we can use one double terminal block. So that's gonna enable us to save space and move that main isolator over to the position that we need. So you'll see me work through that in a second. Also, you'll see that this isolator had an additional contact on it, which I don't need. It's not a three phase panel, so I can remove that, which you'll see is evident in a bit. Now I'm just getting an idea of where the main earth terminal and main main neutral terminals are gonna go. So there you can see, I've now removed that extra contactor or contact. Thinking about where to position the earth bar, took me a bit of time to sort of work out. So yeah, now I'm just replacing those two single terminal blocks with one of those double terminal blocks from Wago. So you'll see that I'm starting to create some space here to move this along. So yeah, ended up using 
10 double terminals, which worked out to save me 10 single terminal blocks. So basically I saved that much space on the DIN rail. And as you can see now, that's what it looks like with a bit of space if we do need to add additional terminal blocks. So yeah, as mentioned earlier, just continuing with the terminal blocks in a similar fashion on the BMS side. Now on to the 10 volt power supply and distribution terminal blocks. And these distribution terminal blocks, you never know when you first start, like me here, you never know how many are gonna be needed. So you just sort of estimate and just make sure you've got some room to add additional terminal, terminal blocks if you need them. Now on to adding the PLC control modules. You can see just rearranging the BMS terminal blocks over here. I originally had this RJ45 Ethernet connection over here and I didn't have any KNX terminals. So I just, yeah, moved that over, added the KNX terminal blocks and then we've got space for expansion over here, whether it's additional PLC modules or additional terminal blocks. Now realizing that the DIN rail for the main isolator needs a gap in it, because the main isolator needs to move up slightly. And then I realized oh, I have to take all the terminal blocks off to remove the DIN rail, obviously. So I had to do that. I've, yeah, I could have probably thought about this and planned this a little bit better, but um, yeah, again, it, it is what it is. So yeah, as you can see, I've just added, cut that, cut the bit out of the DIN rail, added this piece, added this piece, and now I've got space for this to move up and down. And there's some holes within that isolator that will allow me to fix it um, on its own, um, which I will do later on once the panel's pretty much complete and I know w how far up or down to fix it. And then the final bit here, guys, is just actually working out where the main earth terminals go in, where the main neutral terminals are going or distribution bars, however you want to refer to them as. Yeah, and then obviously drilling, tapping and fixing. So yeah, just some final images. So this main isolator needs to be moved up slightly, but we do that right at the end. So yeah, this is a really nice tool, um, drilling and tapping two in one tool. So you can drill, bad image, but yeah, you can drill the clearance hole and then go straight in with the tap that is just above on this bit here and then yeah just fix it straight away with your with your fixing screws so yeah this is what it looks like finished off you've got that movement there the gap in the din rail this is fixed neutral bars or bar or distribution block and you've got mcbs transformers contactors overloads relays the bms terminal blocks plcs and the distribution blocks for 10 volts 24 volts and there's also some control circuits later on that get added here so first thing when labeling components guys bit of electrical tape and then i just mark it with a sharpie each of those relays reason being things might change throughout the project throughout working through the panel relays might get moved they might get sort of changed so there's no point doing a label i don't think a professional label at this stage until everything's finalized so bit of tape to start with so next thing is I do the MCBs and you saw there with a bit with a tape measure just working out the length and then for these ones rather than sticking them on the actual MCBs I'm going to stick it on the back plate and the reason being is MCBs they're pretty much fixed they don't move about within the panel but also they're things that are higher likelihood of being changed or swapped out or burnt out or maybe you need to increase or decrease the size so to save anyone having to do that i'm just sticking the labels to the back plate and then no one has to worry about relabeling an mcb when they switch it in or out and then on to marking the components so as you can see i try and make them all the same length all the same size text just yeah i like that consistency throughout and what I'm using is a trusty brother label printer here and definitely recommend getting some tweezers. Just makes handling those little labels so much easier. And then Wago printer, we get on to using that a bit later. And then with the laptop socket, as you can see, I'm marking that with like a more hazardous label pointing out that it's connected to a 10 amp MCB. So 10 amp max, not that it's likely to be overloaded, but just think it's important. To, to put that there. And then moving on to labeling the PLCs. 
again all keeping the same sort of font and consistency and then moving on to labeling the distribution blocks down here so there end up looking something like this this was just a starting point i ended up adding more later on so this this changes all the time again that's why i use electrical tape and just a sharpie for this bit here again until they're finalized and then we use a professional label like this or a wago mark or a wago printer Thank <laughs> you.